All I'm saying is the story today, you know, way overwrote a simple fact that has been true since January, which is the president uh, is willing to and interested in talking about ways to strengthen Social Security in the long term, uh, and uh, and then separately, but related in a related way because of the nature of the story, we have also not put any bars on the door to uh, you know to disallow issues that people want to bring into the room. If that bit from the White House press secretary Jay Carney sounds a little vague and non-committal and kind of floaty, it might be because Jay Carney is describing something vague and non-committal and a little floaty. The White House this week is sending up what is known in politics as a trial balloon, a proposal that you sort of put out there for the purpose of judging reaction to it. You're not committing to anything, you're floating a possibility. President Obama has been meeting with Republicans this week trying to work out a deal on the federal deficit and the overall debt ceiling. And the president, arguably, is now signaling that he might be open to cutting Medicare and Social Security. Might be, maybe, open to cuts for two of America's most popular and successful government programs. Anybody want to react to that? Yes, please. Democrats on Capitol Hill saying they will not vote for any debt ceiling deal that includes cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Congressional Democrats uh, are not going to support something that seeks to balance the budget on the backs of Social Security beneficiaries. Congressman Chris Van Hollen there, also House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, both saying no way, no how, no cuts for Medicare and Social Security. Groups like the National Nurses Union, Union, National Nurses United, saying they will not endorse anyone who cuts Social Security. AARP, the formidable older persons lobby, telling the White House uh, that they should keep their hands off Social Security. The Progressive Change Campaign Committee asking left-leaning Democratic voters to forswear working for President Obama's re-election if he cuts Social Security or Medicare. The White House knew they would get this kind of vociferous reaction. I'm guessing that they both knew it and they probably even welcome it. Because giving the one finger salute to their most diehard supporters and their values, stiffing the Democratic base is frankly a time honored way for moderate Democratic politicians to demonstrate seriousness in Washington. And uh, everybody acknowledged that uh, there's gonna be pain involved uh, politically uh, on all sides. Oh boy, pain for everyone. Uh, this, this really is a central part of how Democrats operate now. In contrast to how Republicans kowtow to and sign pledges to even the rather extreme elements of their base, Democrats like to roil and aggravate and alienate theirs. It is sometimes called punching the hippie. And look, nobody, nobody likes to have their string pulled to say exactly what they're expected to say. We'll cut your favorite programs. Not our favorite programs. How dare you cut our favorite programs? See, I'm brave enough to cut their favorite programs. Watch how they squeal, right? Nobody likes having their string pulled like that. But it's not just that President Obama has stepped on their reflexive automatic protest nerve here. Angry liberals have real reasons to be angry. Transactionally, the White House offering to cut Social Security and Medicare is a waste. Politically, it's a waste. Substantively, it is a waste. There's nothing more fundamental to democratic politics than Social Security and Medicare. Going back to FDR and the New Deal, Democrats founded Social Security and Medicare. Republicans fought them from the beginning. Republicans have long tried to get rid of those programs, and Democrats have protected them. Support for people who work for a living, that's the closest thing there is to a defined reason for the Democratic Party's existence, going back to the days of our great-grandparents. It's the clearest reason that we have two parties in this country. If there's any single other aspect of American life, Life that is as central to the meaning of the Democratic Party, it's support for union rights. Republicans win elections by harnessing the power of corporations. Democrats win by mobilizing unions. Democrats didn't used to be embarrassed by this. And we have seen this year that Republican governors and legislatures have been able to chip away at union rights and at unions themselves. So when a Democratic president in that context comes forward with as grave a concession as trading cuts to Medicare and Social Security for some revenue increases, He'd better be getting something in return, something more than a flat no. I can tell you one thing, that we are, we are united uh, as Republicans to say now's not the time to raise taxes. Uh, I've talked with the Speaker, he is not for increasing taxes. If this is a real offer from President Obama and not just a test, President Obama is offering up a significant slice of the Democratic soul here, and he still can't get a deal from the Republicans.
Nate Silver writing today on his blog at the New York Times, 538, that Republicans' rejection of any compromise is natural right now. The incentives line up for them to not compromise or give at all. The enthusiasm of Republican voters is to not solve the debt ceiling problem. You can see this playing out openly in Republican politics right now at the national level. Michelle Bachman running for the Republican nomination, running second to Mitt Romney. She released her first campaign ad today. The campaign ad ends like this. I will not vote to increase the debt ceiling. Because I'd rather have America default on its debt and set off global economic meltdown. Smiles, everyone. So transactionally, in terms of the Democrats, what the Democrats might, might get for a giveaway this profound, Democrats appear to be getting nothing in return for this. Politically, in, in pure political terms, the Democrats' most potent asset right now is that Republicans this spring in the House and the Senate voted overwhelmingly for the Paul Ryan plan to kill Medicare, while Democrats voted unanimously to defend it. This stark vote, this stark contrast between Democrats and Republicans was potent enough to turn a blood-red congressional district in upstate New York uh, to turn that district blue in a special election a month after that House vote. Congressman Steve Israel and Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi are in charge of helping Democrats win back the House next year. When they are asked about how they are planning to do that, they say they've got a three-part strategy, and the three-part strategy is this, Medicare, Medicare, and Medicare. The Republicans voting to kill Medicare and Democrats standing unambiguously to defend it in 2011 is the Democrats' strongest political asset. If they now move to hurt Medicare, care too, they will throw that asset away. So transactionally, no. Politically, no. Substantively, offering to cut Medicare and Social Security, also, frankly, no. It is a waste. Social Security does not contribute to the deficit. What? No, it's true. It does not contribute to the deficit. Robert Reich, former Secretary of Labor, Social Security trustee, explains it as well as anyone. He says, until last year, Social Security took in more payroll taxes than it paid out in benefits. It lent the surpluses to the rest of the government. Now that Social Security has started to pay out more than it takes in, Social Security can simply collect what the rest of the government owes it. This will keep it fully solvent for the next 26 years. You know how you pay your Social Security taxes out of your paycheck? Right, you're paying for it. It is not a handout. This is not welfare. The program is not broke, and it is not broken. It did not cause the deficits, and you ought not raid it for the purpose of fixing the deficit. Likewise, Medicare gets a bad rap for being too expensive, right? It's true that Medicare spending is going up. The yellow bar on the left shows Medicare spending per patient is up over the past decade by 4.6%. Compare it, though, to what's happening in the private sector. Costs growing nearly twice as fast. Medicare is a bargain for this country. It's the best example we've got of holding down out of control health care spending. The private sector is a disaster compared with Medicare. Our out of control health care costs would be that much worse if Medicare was gone. Medicare and Social Security are successes. They are among the most successful programs in American history. They work for the people who are getting them and they work for the country. That is why they are so popular. That's why the extent to which Democrats are seen as the party who brought you Social Security and Medicare and who will not let Republicans kill those things even though they want to is a thumbs up or thumbs down determinant of the Democratic Party's future. The White House has floated a trial balloon now about letting the Republicans have their way with Medicare and Social Security at long last. That trial balloon is officially popping.